Okay, here we are back on node one, and let's install SQL. We have to change our media first, so let's go to VM, removable devices, and settings. Let's switch this from the Windows DVD to the SQL Server media. And we should see it change over here. There we go. Let's double click on it and start up start start up the setup. There we go. Click installation and failover cluster install. Coming up with the rule check here, it's going to take a couple minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, that's done, and it's over here on product updates, and you notice how it didn't find anything. Well, that's because, remember, this is a closed network that I've got in here, and it doesn't have access to the internet, so there's no way it's going to be able to find the updates on the, on the Microsoft server. So let's click Next. And installing the setup files is going to take a couple minutes again, so I'm going to pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, here we are at the setup support rules, and we've got some warnings. We expected these warnings, and there's nothing wrong here. The DTC, we're going to get to that. We haven't clustered DTC yet, so uh, we'll do that after SQL is installed. The only other thing that we have that we'd really want to worry about would be the cluster verification warnings. But you, know, but you remember that warning that we got was because we didn't have two NICs, and we're just fine with that in this scenario, so we're golden here. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now, the only thing I bypassed was the serial number screen so that I didn't expose my serial number to the internet. I'm going to accept the license terms because I can't go forward without it. SQL Server install. Now we're going to pick our features. All of the database engine. And let's do the client management tools. And let's stop there. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't install SQL on the same drive as I did Windows but I'm really limited on space here on this laptop, so I'm going to go ahead and make an exception in this case. But ordinarily, you would have Windows on C and then like SQL on D or all of the other applications on the, on the server on D, right? But this time, we're going to make an exception. Just know that in, in real life, out in the wild, you wouldn't do this. I'm going to click Next. We've got another feature rules check, so I'm going to pause and come back when that's done. Here we are. It's time to click Next again. Okay, this is where the clustering stuff starts to happen. For the instance, we've got to choose the SQL Server network name. Now remember, in the diagram before, we had these two boxes on either side of the slide. We had dotted lines to the disk down below that they both share, and above we had dotted lines to this cloud that we called SQL VI. And that's the virtual instance name that you're going to use to connect the clients to, regardless of which server that the cluster is currently running on. So we have to pick this name well. This is what all of our clients are going to see. And by clients, I don't mean, you know, our business clients, I mean our applications, right? And what you'll quite often run across is that a company will have some sort of naming convention. Just like for the Windows cluster, they'll have a naming convention for SQL. I've seen it be everything from the application name and then VI after it to it just having a really subtle V in there to let you know that it's the SQL virtual instance. It really doesn't matter what they come up with. They, they almost always come up with something, and then the guy who did it leaves and the new guy comes up with something else. So you almost never have a real cohesive naming standard. So right now we're just going to call this SQL VI. I'm going to stick with the diagram, right? So I'll call this SQL VI. Next. And it's going to be a default instance. There we go. Disk space requirements. Just fine. Okay, the cluster resource group. This is the name of the group that is going to hold the resources in the cluster manager. It defaults to SQL Server and then MS SQL Server. I really don't like that. I just like it to be MS SQL Server, and I like all of mine to be MS SQL Server. I like to name it after the instance, in other words. So I always, I always shorten it to just MS SQL Server. You're welcome to leave it as a, as a default or change it. Here we go. What disks do we want? Let's go ahead and add all the disks. You notice the only disk that's not available is the quorum drive. Let's go ahead and choose all these guys. 
Next. Here's where we get to pick the IP address for the virtual instance. So this is what all the clients are going to connect to. This is the, the IP address that is going to be in DNS. Let's go ahead and say IPv4. And here we are. Nope, sorry, the address right there. So it is going to be 192.168.195. What are we up to? Six? Let's call it six. Let's call it six. I think we're up to six. Next. There we are. Now, SQL Server Agent. Is all, all these are, all these guys are going to be manual the the agent and the database engine we'll we'll talk about the services later but just leave this the way it is now the service passwords that's one thing I forgot to do we're gonna need an AD account in order to run SQL Server so let's go ahead and do that right now I'm gonna leave this right here and I'm gonna go back to the domain controller and I'm going to go to tools well I've got to sign in first. There we go. So now we'll go to tools. We'll go to AD users and computers. Users. And let's create a new user. So we're going to call this SQL service. And the login name is going to be the exact same. There we go. Click next. There we are. User must not change. User cannot change. And password never expires. Let's go ahead and do that. And next. There we go. So now we can come back to node 1. Oops. Not what I wanted. I wanted server manager. Now on server manager, I'm going to come over here and say tools. And then computer management. Local users. I'm going to say groups. I'm going to put this guy in the admin group because I can. SQL Service, Control C, or Alt C. There we go. Uh, next. Good. Now I can go back to my, SQL, in, to my SQL install and I can pick my agent service. I can browse here if I want. SQL SVC, Alt C to check the name. Perfect. I need the password. There we go. And the database engine will get the exact same. Let's just copy that. There we go. Perfect. And click next. You want to leave the startup type as manual, though. I'll talk about that later. Sysadmins, let's say add current user. I'm not going to give an SA password right now. I'm just going to leave it as it is. Data directories. This is where we decide where we want our stuff to be, right? Where we want our different files. So for the system directory, is that going to be on F? I don't think so. The system DBs were on F. Okay, fine. They're on F. And the user database default is on... So user DBs is on G. So we'll put that on G. And the logs, weren't they on L? The logs were on L. And the temp DB is on F as well. On the backup directory, I remember that. That was Z. And let's just do Z colon backup. Z colon backups. There we go and everything else should be just fine. Now mind you, those are only the defaults for the most part. For the user and logs and the backups, those are only the defaults and they can be changed anytime. Let's not send anything to Microsoft because we're offline. Click Next. Now once I click Install, it's going to start going. There we go. So Install is running. It's going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause and I'll come back when it's done. 
Okay, the setup is finished and we have ourselves a working SQL cluster. Now, it's only a one node cluster, so it's really not gonna do us any good as far as clustering goes, but we do officially have a working SQL cluster. So let me close this and I'm gonna close the setup. I'm still on node one, right? Yep, I'm still on node one. Now that we have our working SQL cluster, let's go add node two to the cluster and then we'll actually be able to do something with it. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna add node two.